Hello and welcome back everyone to my channel. Today we'll start another lesson and that is the storyteller. Without wasting any time, let's start with this wonderful story. It was a hot afternoon and the railway carriage was correspondingly sultry and the next stop was a temple comb nearly an hour ahead. The occupants of the carriage were a small girl and a smaller girl and a small boy. An aunt belonging to the children occupied one corner seat and the further corner seat on the opposite side was occupied by a bachelor who was a stranger to their party. But the small girls and the small boy emphatically occupied the compartment. Both the aunt and the children were conversational in a limited, persistent way, reminding one of the attentions of a housefly that refuses to be discouraged. Most of the aunt's remarks seemed to begin with, Do not, and nearly all the children's remarks began with, Why? The bachelor said nothing out loud. So the scene begins in a railway carriage and it was a very hot afternoon and even inside the carriage it was very hot sultry means hot and the next stop was at temple Kum, and it would take around an hour to reach now inside that carriage there were a small girl a smaller girl and a small boy and accompanying these three kids was their aunt and she was sitting at one corner seat and the opposite side of her seat at another corner was occupied by a bachelor and he was a stranger to these people but these kids had occupied the entire compartment both the aunt and children were conversational but in a limited way now most of the time whenever they would talk to each other many times the aunt would start her sentence with do not saying the kids do not do what they were doing and most of the time the kids would reply back by saying why now the bachelor he did not say anything he was just looking at everyone do not cyril do not exclaimed the aunt as the small boy began smacking the cushions of the seat, producing a cloud of dust at each blow. Come and look out of the window, she added. The child moved reluctantly to the window. Why are those sheep being driven out of that field? He asked. Now the aunt told to the little boy, do not, Cyril, do not. So we come to know that the small boy's name was Cyril. And he began smacking the cushions of the seat. That is, hitting the cushions of the seat. And all the dust was produced over there. So she wanted to divert the attention of the kids. So she said, come and look out of the window. Now the kids came towards the window unwillingly. They were not interested, but still they came. And this boy... He asked, why are those sheep being driven out of that field, taken away from that field? I expect they are being driven to another field where there is more grass, said the aunt weakly. But there is lots of grass in that field, protested the boy. There is nothing else but grass there. Aunt, there is lots of grass in that field. Perhaps the grass in the other field is better suggested the aunt fatuously. Why is it better? came the swift, inevitable question. Oh, look at those cows, exclaimed the aunt. Nearly every field along the line had contained cows or bullocks. But she spoke as though she were drawing attention to a rarity. Now this aunt of theirs, she replied by saying they were taken to another field because there was more grass there. But this boy started protesting. He said, there is lots of grass in that field. Why are they taking to the other field? There is lots of grass over there. So aunt says, 
that maybe the grass in the other field is better than this one. So again that boy immediately he asked the question, why is it better? Now this aunt was very tired of these kids question. She wanted to divert these kids mind. Immediately she was like, look at those cows. In every field along that line which they were crossing that contained cows and bullocks. But she was pointing in such a way that it was something that you don't find regularly. It was something rare. Why is the grass in the other field better? Persisted Siren. The frown on the bachelor's face was deepening to a scowl. He was a hard, unsympathetic man, the aunt decided in her mind. She was utterly unable to come to any satisfactory decision about the grass in the other field. The smaller girl created a diversion by beginning to recite on the road to Mandalay. She only knew the first line, but she put her limited knowledge to the fullest possible use. She repeated the line over and over again in a dreamy but resolute and very audible voice. It seemed to the bachelor as though someone had had a bet with her that she could not repeat the line aloud 2000 times without stopping. Whoever it was who had made the wager was likely to lose his bet. But this boy, Cyril, he kept on asking that same question. Why is the grass in the other field better? Now the bachelor who was sitting at another corner, his frown was deepening to a scowl. What's a scowl? Glare. He was a hard, unsympathetic man. This aunt thought in her mind when he turned his face. This boy was still asking the same question and aunt was not able to give or decide any proper satisfactory answer to the question that he was asking about the grass in the other field. Now the smaller girl, she created a diversion. She started singing on the road to Mandalay. Now the problem was, she didn't know the entire song. She just knew the first line and she kept on repeating the same line over and over again in a very clear voice and the bachelor started thinking maybe someone had put a bet with her that she cannot repeat that line 2000 times without stopping and that too loudly and whoever would do that bet with her would definitely lose. She was repeating the same thing again and again and again. Come over here and listen to a story, said the aunt when the bachelor had looked twice at her and once at the communication cord. The children moved listlessly towards the aunt's end of the carriage. Evidently, her reputation as a storyteller did not rank high in their estimation. In a low, confidential voice, interrupted at frequent intervals by loud, petulant questioning from her listeners, she began an unenterprising and deplorably uninteresting story about a little girl who was good and made friends with everyone on account of her goodness and was finally saved from a mad bull by a number of rescuers who admired her moral character. Now the aunt said to the kids, come here and listen to a story. She wanted to divert their attention because they were irritating them and the bachelor had frowned. So the children moved towards the aunt's end of the carriage to listen to her story. But however the kids knew that she is not a good storyteller but still they wanted to listen to a story. Now aunt started telling a story in a very low voice and she was interrupted, stopped frequently by these kids because they were asking a lot of questions. She began an interesting story about a little girl who was good in nature and she made friends with everyone and finally she was saved from a mad bull by a number of people who had 
respected or admired her moral character. Wouldn't they have saved her if she had not been good? demanded the bigger of the small girls. It was exactly the question that the bachelor had wanted to ask. Well, yes, admitted the aunt lamely, but I don't think they would have run quite so fast to her help if they had not liked her so much. It is the stupidest story I've ever heard, said the bigger of the small girls with immense conviction. I didn't listen after the first bit. It was so stupid, said Cyril. The smaller girl made no actual comment on the story, but she had long ago recommenced a murmured repetition of her favourite line. You don't seem to be a success as a storyteller, said the bachelor suddenly from his corner. Wouldn't they have saved her if she had not been good? Now bigger of the smaller girls, she asked this question. And this was the same question that the bachelor had also wanted to ask. So aunt lamely, in a weak, unsatisfied way, she said, yes, but I don't think they would have run quite so fast to help her if they didn't like her. So that same girl, the bigger of the small girl, she says, this is the most stupidest story that I've ever heard. The boy Cyril, he tells that he didn't listen after the first bit. It was so stupid. Now the smaller girl, she made no comment on the story. But she, long ago, she had stopped listening to that story. And she was continuing the same repetition of that favorite line. Road to Mandalay. Now all of a sudden, this bachelor, he said, you don't seem to be a success as a storyteller, he says to the aunt. The aunt bristled in instant defense at this unexpected attack. It's a very difficult thing to tell stories that children can both understand and appreciate. She said stiffly. I don't agree with you, said the bachelor. Perhaps you would like to tell them a story, was the aunt's retort. Tell us a story, demanded the bigger of the small girls. Once upon a time, began the bachelor, there was a little girl called Bertha, who was extraordinarily good. The children's momentarily aroused interest began at once to flicker. All stories seemed dreadfully alike, no matter who told them. She did all that she was told. She was always truthful. She kept her clothes clean, ate milk puddings as though they were jam tarts, learned her lessons perfectly and was polite in her manners. Now immediately aunt rose in instant defense at this attack from the bachelor. It's a very difficult thing to tell stories that children can both understand and appreciate. She said it very stiffly. So the bachelor says that he doesn't agree with her on that point. So the aunt immediately she says, perhaps you would like to tell them a story. So the bigger of the small girls, she heard it and she was like, tell us a story. And immediately the bachelor started, once upon a time, there was a little girl called Bertha who was extraordinarily good. Now the kids, very interestingly, they sat to listen to that story. He continued saying, She did all that she was told. She was always truthful. She kept her clothes clean. She ate milk puddings as though they were jam tarts. She learned her lessons perfectly. And she was very polite in her manners. That is, she was very good. Was she pretty? asked the bigger of the small girls. Not as pretty as any of you, said the bachelor, but she was horribly good. There was a wave of reaction in favour of the story. The word horrible in connection with goodness was a novelty that commended itself. It seemed to introduce a ring of truth that was absent from the aunt's tales of infant life. 
So this bigger of the small girls, she asked, was she pretty? So the bachelor says, not as pretty as any of you. But she was very, very good. Now in this, there is a favor towards the story. There is a change in the reactions. Now the word horrible in connection with goodness was a novelty that commended itself. This was missing in the story that aunt had told. I do hope you have understood the lesson till here. The next part will be continued in the next video. Until then, do subscribe and don't forget, if you have any doubts, you can clear it on the comment section. Thank you and stay safe.